Hello. Well, hello. Hi. We we have uh, uh, an old friend back among us today. Yeah, it's been a long time. <laughs> it has, and it's very wonderful to have you back. Um, so we're, uh, as Donnie and I, uh, in one of our previous videos, gave an indication that we were going to have a, a special session inviting Carla back to have some deeper conversation specifically around astrology. Um, we did collect some questions and we sent those along to Carla. So she has taken a look over those and she's going to give us some more context and mm -hmm. in-depth understanding around astrology. And uh, I don't want to take up too much of the time because everybody here knows that I can tend to talk a little bit too much. So I'm just going to go ahead and stop and I'm going to turn it over to Carla, who we're very happy to have back with us. And uh, Carla, take it away. All right. Good to see you, Donnie, also, <clears throat> by the way. Thank you. So what have you guys done? I, we talked a little bit about astrology back months ago. Have you guys pursued any more of it in your videos? Um, I wouldn't say we've pursued it specifically, but we have had some touch points where, as we've been reading through White Magic, where we might bring in some kind of correlations with astrology and more specifically kind of things that we might have encountered in our charts and things like that, kind of like we have done in the past. Um, but nothing as in-depth as we did, I think it was about a year ago, actually, because um, Donnie and I were at the beach together when we did that, which was just about a year ago when we did that other session. So nothing quite to that gravity, but um, probably some touch points here and there as we've been reading through the materials. So is that the one where I asked you how it was working out with your marriage and you said you didn't have any more arguments after that? Was well, that now it's, now it's just pure bliss. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> you and your wife can go on and be a group that can work with marriage counseling, right? <laughs> if people would be open to that level of counseling, sure. <laughs> you know, all they need is that Cahill Gabrand uh, poem that, you know, there has to be the freedom, let there be freedom in, in, uh, in, you know, in the relationship. Right. You see, the astrology really does help the, yeah. the relationship and allow us to be uh, ourselves. Well, that's really what it came down to, I think, too, is opening up to that level of freedom on each party. And I'm talking about my marriage now, because um whereas i might have been more controlling back in the day now i've come to realization that that's not really what i'm supposed to be doing because it isn't just about me everybody has their own free will um and you you need to let them kind of exercise that free will so that they can tread along the path that they're intended to tread along um so who am i to try to encroach somebody with what I think should be when what I think should be is what should be for me, but not necessarily for them. That, you know, when I start a class and I particularly am saying this for the purpose of Virgos in a class, <clears throat> there are no bad signs. Okay. There are none. There's 12 signs. They all have their validity. There's no bad signs. Um, generally, because if the, if there's that Virgo energy around, they know what's right and best for everybody. That is that's generally the consensus. That's um, Tom's ascendant, isn't it? That is my ascendant. So now it all makes sense. <laughs> why why so I would like that so much in the past. <laughs> You were just explaining what you figured out. And actually, the interesting part was you did say back away. And I figured out it wasn't them. It was me who was pointing the finger all the time. Mm -hmm. It was me who was telling everybody else they were wrong. But nobody told you that. You got the information of what the Virgo is and figured it out yourself. And that's right. the blessing. Because all of a sudden the light bulb went on mm -hmm. and life got better. <laughs> yeah. And it's amazing how much better and easier it does get when you just, I guess, come to that realization. Like, like yeah. 
and and you don't fight it like you did you don't don't fight what is to be because that's just going to make it worse for you in a little bit not in a little bit a lot rougher so not yeah. as easy to overcome but yeah things come a lot easier now. <laughs> not to say life is easy but there's always going to be challenges that bubble up but i think i approach everything a lot differently than i used to and it's it's worked out quite well and Donnie can say the same over there <laughs> upstairs that guy there, <laughs> certainly yeah no i uh i don't have yeah it's been great it's been great but, and and it gets and it does seem to to get better as soon as you relax on each other if you can do that if you can have a part here if your partner can you know if you have that togetherness where you can work the astrology sides of it to see that at the same time then that's fantastic i can totally see how people would split up though if hmm. if somebody were trying to hold on and then this other person over here is saying, well, this is about freedom, you know, more or less. So you can, I can see both sides and how it can bring you together. It can also um, push, push you further apart, probably, is my guess. Yeah. But more likely you, you're willing to give space if you find out that two people aren't supposed to be exactly the same and that they have their purpose and their plan. Right their agenda not that's we're starting to talk about the chart at this point mm -hmm. and that um <clears throat> everybody's here well first of all why are we here you know the indication will be that that the it is the soul that determines a need for another incarnation that's what we are we're the little robots down here the automatons that are here to do the work for the soul <laughs> okay and so it's the purpose of the soul that's going to be satisfied by who we are and what that chart reads okay because it's here to accomplish whatever that goal is per individual everybody's different so um you know that's a big one that i th i think is well, most people don't know what astrology is for starters. So, and they have no idea the amount of information is there. And, um, <laughs> and later you have to question, and I'll, I'll deal with it a little bit later, what it's, what the whole thing is about anyway. Um, but the data and information, let's go for the data and the information is, the chart obviously is a photo shot of where all the planets were at the time you were born. Um, it's in a circle, so nobody gets out. I had a, a, a real gung-ho student and we had had our first class and she went home and she's looking up all these, her planets in her, in her chart. And, what they represent. She comes back the next week and she says, you know, some of these don't get along with each other. Can I check, pick and choose the ones I want? <laughs> it doesn't work that way. you got them all, but they are in a circle and there's no escape. Okay. They are all going to interact with each other. So you get the, the time, date and place. That's the, the three, level matrix that you need to process and you're going to have that astrology chart and um it's it imprints they say the from zero to the age of three into <coughs> excuse me in terms of the environment you're in and then it's your operating program you know because we pattern we know human beings pattern and uh, <clears throat> we're really good at that. And we do here too. So, um, and it's set in place the minute that that doctor slaps you in the butt and you take your first breath and you start to scream, you know, and you're logged on, literally. And we know you're logged on now because we know that what every cell membrane 
and our body has a sender and a receiver. Mm -hmm. And we are part of a solar system, planet Earth, <clears throat> and we are certainly planetary issue, planet Earth. And so, but we're part of a larger group. We're part of seven planets. And so that's what we're seeing in the chart. And we have interaction literally with all of them, although we're usually not aware of that <clears throat> in terms of the contact and the, the energy flows back and forth. And so that's what a chart really is. Uh, and, but the incredible amount of information it has is something that in the 60s when astrology kind of uh, surfaced again, because, you know, it goes in and out of time. It's in favor, it's out of favor. Um, predominantly with the Christian religion, for the most part, it's probably been out of favor. Not entirely. There were some folks who were astrologers at certain times in the last 2000 years. But <clears throat> if you've got your chart, you're in control. You know, you're communicating with your soul. You're communicating with God. You don't need a church to, hmm. to send you up somewhere and take care of it all for you. So to have an astrology chart for the most part would have been out of favor during Christianity because you weren't supposed to be in control of yourself or aware of yourself. So, um, and that chart literally comes fully equipped with everything that you're gonna need throughout your entire lifetime in, in terms of transits that are, they're already packed in at the day you're born all of that is sitting there waiting to roll out in time. Have you ever given that much thought? Probably not to that depth, but now hearing it and contemplating it here on the fly, it makes a lot of sense that all of that would have been predisposed and it just kind of The complete Hap package. happens as the time progresses. Yeah. In other um, words, if there's no change in the solar system, okay, um, then all of those, because nowadays easy with the computer programming, I can buy a book that tells me where the planets are going to be every day. And literally, if I wanted to really process it every minute of every day, for 100 years. Mm -hmm. Okay. In fact, I have, uh, and we're bouncing for people who are listening to this transits are when you've got your stationary planets inside that circle. But we know in real world that they keep moving. So as an astrologers, we look to see where one of the planets out there in the world that is moving in real time, our real time anyway, lines up with one of our stationary ones. We expect an event pattern. We expect something to happen because you're going to have a contact. You're going to have a data drop. And then you're going to process that. Whatever that energy is, you're going to process and integrate it into your system. And it should be an attribute. If you work with it, then it's something that you need. And this is how you learn. This is how you literally grow. When you don't have the transits coming to you, nothing's really coming. You might be as busy as can all get out because you're busy with phenomena. Mm -hmm. You know, your, your car is a phenomena. Okay, I put my foot on the gas and here we go. I better pay attention. Uh, but it's just phenomena. Nothing happens to you in that regard unless you drive into somebody or something. And mm -hmm. you're not likely to do that if the transit isn't there for it to, to occur. Uh, which is a rather pragmatic statement, but it's the way it works out. Hmm. Interesting. Um, so then I think I think it hearing that it'd be fair to say that 
So the minute that we come into the synchronization, that chart is set for us, however it looks. And I'd say, going back to your friend that said, uh, you know, I have all these things that oppose, can I pick and choose? Well, I would say, yes, but you've already done that. Your soul did that when you came in, I guess, right? And now you're stuck with it as you see it. So you Actually, have to deal with let it. me stop you for just one second. Yes. The, the hold that thought is the soul determines there's the need for the incarnation, but they, the soul does not have enough perspective to determine where you're going to land, where mm. you're going to be placed. Okay. And so think about this for a second. Um, we're jumping to some metaphysics here. If the soul is on the third subplane of the mental plane, okay, it does not have the perspective like the cosmic lords of karma do, who are further up on that chart. Okay, you with me, Donnie? Mm -hmm. So the capacity to have the overview to determine all the interplay that is beneficial for all, including the planet, including the soul, including in individuals you've interacted with before. There's a whole list. You'll see them in Annie Besant. Mm -hmm. She remarks about it. So it, the soul doesn't have the perspective. It hasn't even broken out of the mental plane yet, much less into the spiritual triad. Anyway, I just wanted to make that point because a lot of people say, well, your soul chose this and so on gotcha. and so forth. It, it needed an incarnation. You were ordered. You didn't get here by accident. Sometimes the mother or father thinks it was an accident, but you're not an accident. Every individual who's born on this planet was ordered okay uh, there was an order put in by their soul so um you know for anybody out there who thinks they were unwanted who's alive running around bipedal with the brain and all the basic equipment they were not unwanted it's just a perspective they have because of on, you know, stuff that went on around here, right. but that's not the case. And, uh, but now if I, can you pick up, can you remember to pick up where you left off? Um, well, thanks for that clarification. Um, no, what I was going to say though, was just, so it'd be fair to say then that, so now hearing that, so the soul does not necessarily have the well doesn't have the foresight to kind of see how that path's going to lay out some higher entity does um but my point i was trying to make is the entire life path that's set before us that's set for us in this incarnation has already been predetermined but we just don't know what's going to happen that's right probably because we a, have some choices right at any given time with the energy that comes to us mm -hmm. as to how we're going to process it and what what we're going to do with it right. um but it's coming in other words that whole that whole all those transits are there you know i um, yeah donnie did... i have a question now yeah. do the do the four words of karma have the foresight to see the time so it is more or less known. It's known. I'm just, I guess that's what I'm asking. Sure. That's okay. why they have the perspective to do that. Very, very good. Yeah. I just wanted to. I mean, but, but if you want to look at it from the viewpoint of a computer program, it's far more massive in its analysis than anything that this planet's got. <laughs> you know, and I say that because DK will mention that in, in each grouping, okay, and so now we could look at chakras. We could say that this, our solar system has seven chakras. It's an entity in itself, but it's part of another entity that of which it is only one of the chakras in a larger seven and so on and so forth, till you really get to the universe in total. 
if, if you extrapolate it far enough. But the comment that had been made about it when he's talking about it is that at each level, be it these seven, be it that they're one of seven, which would have been like 49, you know, if you had seven times seven chakras in a larger entity, there is the capacity in whatever that entity is to have full uh, accounting for all of the energy in the system. And that there is some entity in that that is capable of having that full accounting. So down here, we just got Santa Claus who knows what you did. And we got God who knows what you're doing. Okay, they're the ones that we attribute it to. I don't know if we do for the bunny rabbit um, for Easter. But mm -hmm. so when they say to you, God knows everything you're doing, he does. You know, our relative God that we see, but that somewhere along the line, there's a full, conscious accounting available for the whole system. So, mm -hmm. so when you want to know if we have, if they have the perspective to drop you down the right chimney, the stork, mm -hmm. yeah. And it's relative to the purpose of the soul in a given incarnation, the, you know, what the expectation is, what the desire is. Um, you know, maybe that the way I've seen it laid out is maybe they it round, wants to kind of round you out a little bit, or maybe there's something you kind of have to go back and, and rework, uh, whatever it is. And so this is, but this is the whole package. You come with the full package. Mm -hmm. initially so this is the kind of level of awareness that you have available if you want it you know and so it gives you a sense i think and and so the transits come along and they'll give you an idea of okay well for the next nine months we're working on this project the three-part systems um, and so you have a, a little bit of a foundation of knowing where you're at, what you're working on. It's important to you because it came to you. It's part of what you're supposed to be doing. And so you can give it your all during that period of time. And you also know when it's going to end. So, and then it, there'll be something else coming along. Um, And, and you had uh, said in the, I'm sorry, you had said in the beginnings of, in the beginning of those, you you kind of get your challenge initially, what you're to be work, what we're working on, and then by the middle, you kind of have a plan, and then you institute it by the end. Okay? Right. That's a, that's the three part system, and and first of all, the planets we know they just keep going around. Okay. Um, and there's some of them that just go by once, touch one of, line up with one of your stationary planets, and it just keeps going. That's bringing you some data, some piece of information, what whatever it may be. And then there's a situation where we get the same illusion that if you're sitting on a car or a, a truck or a bus or a train, and the one next to you goes forward, you think you're going backwards. Um, you know, it, that's just basic an, an illusion that, that we have, and we get it out there in the cosmos too. So if you've got somebody up at Palomar Observatory over here and you ask them where Mars is today, and they say it's in uh, three degrees of Leo, and then you come back a few weeks later and say, where is Mars now? And they say, oh, it's in cancer, which is which implies it's going backwards. Um, it, it's an illusion we, that we have, but that's how we record it here because we're looking at a map. And when we're when they're mapping, they're gonna map wherever it is in any given day. So 
when you get a three-part system, basically what happens is the planet comes along, it makes contact with your, your, um, your planet, your stationary planet. That's the first contact. It might go a little further and then it looks like it's backing up. It backs up over that contact. Maybe goes back for a while and then goes forward again. It runs over it one more time, so to speak. So you have three part system. Those are the things you're working with. The one part ones bring you a data, information, an idea, something you're gonna need because it came to you. Um, but then there's the parts where now a bigger issue shows up that you gotta work with. For whatever reason, you're gonna work with it. Um, and you're learning something, you're experiencing something, you're creating something because we are creative beings. We are in a system of union of spirit and matter. We create consciousness, that's what we do. We are conscious creating machines this physical body and you go to Walker and the physical consciousness and he explains it all in detail. Okay. So, um, and so this is the material in your chart that, and your set of transits that you are using in your process of creating the consciousness that you evaluate as your life. Now, some people don't want to know. They just want to operate blind, okay, without a roadmap. Other people want to know. And they generally find a certain degree of comfort in knowing. It doesn't change things for them in terms of the, you're going to get, not get the transits. You know, I got a granddaughter who, um, and because obviously she's had a grandma who does charts, um, she's had her transits probably for six or seven years. She's now out in college. And uh, she was talking to me a while back and she was going through a period where just things were breaking down and, and, and just little irritants coming along. And then the car, something went wrong with the car and she didn't have it for five weeks. I mean, so something did go wrong with the car, whatever it was and this and that. And she says, and I was just sitting there waiting. I can't wait till November. I can't wait till November because she knew she was in the middle of a transit and she knew it was a little troublesome, uh, but she knew when it was going to end. Uh, it has a beginning and it has an end, the transit, if they're a three-part system. And sure enough, she said, yeah, I get real close to that date. And now the car is back and this is fixed and all of that's done. And by the time the end of that transit's done, she doesn't have those problems anymore. And she's not getting new problems after that kind of thing. So it's a little bit of a buffer also, because you know, You'll look, you'll see a trance is going to come, then something shows up and you say, oh, well, that's what that is. Okay. All right. So this is what I'm working with for this period of time, whatever, whatever the stretch of the transit is. Um, it arrives and it arrives on time. The dates are there. Donnie, you can talk about those arriving on time. <laughs> those transits yeah. yeah no no certain certainly i know that you know and it's only been a couple of years that i've been working with this with the chart but i i do know that they come exactly within what say 24 hours you say and uh i'll find you where where you sit yeah you can't hide from me <laughs> no you really cannot you know, the right. interesting part is, you know, is, is how they're, they do such different things, you know, I guess. It's just so interesting. That, well, and they, they you know, this planet does ways, this. Right? And, yeah. What's that? They hit you in different ways, too. 
Yeah, like uh, like you had said, some some come and they remove something, maybe mm -hmm. you know, or like uh, when I had that Saturn Uranus uh, <laughs> it hit and then it kind of changed things, and then uh, and it happened on the day, you know, on that day, and then I had other transits come, you know, I've been working with for I'm, I have a five part now. And as each day comes around on that five part, it has been, and it's Neptune, uh, and I'm with conjunct my ascendant, which is Pisces. So I get, uh, there's a, an intense amount of energy there uh, that comes, that has come with that. And it's been a different experience at each of those dates. And then I started a Saturn transit yesterday, Saturn square Jupiter. And I'm, I saw I'm dealing with all these things, business and uh, life things. And it's just, a, it's a, and it was yesterday. These things have not come into my life in, a, in quite a while. And here they come showing up on that day. You know, can't so make it up. with that knowledge, with that foresight, how does that benefit you? I guess you can kind of look at it like you're 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 changing classrooms or something, you know, like you're moving into a new. Uh, you can you can set out your and prepare your, I guess, to. Uh, to to know that your mode is going to change during that time, so, so you can be ready for the the change. I don't know. I don't. Um, I always anticipate a lot of things, so uh, I'm always looking and looking and ahead and uh, and preparing mentally. And then by the time it comes, it's always much more tame than what you know, because you're spinning wheels, thinking about what things might be, mm -hmm. and then it mm -hmm. shows up, and then it's like, oh, okay, well, you were in the ballpark. You knew it was going to have something, but you didn't know. Well, now, you know, I don't know. That's it. Well, that could be how it, it's it's helped you, because I, I it, that's kind of how I've approached a lot of this, too, Donnie, is that you're kind of looking at ahead as these transits are coming and you know that they're coming and it's going to be bringing some kind of something or some kind of change to you and you run through a bunch of different scenarios in your head kind of leading up to it of what this may be and then when it comes it kind of just settles um and it's almost like by doing all of, for me anyway and maybe this is how it worked for you too is just by kind of anticipating a little bit forward of what it might be you're working through that internally and then you've already kind of shed away all of the stress or frustration that might come with it if it were just to hit in, you that in day in advance <laughs> right yeah, almost in and advance. so you've already worked through it and when it comes it you just let it settle and then life has changed again from that point on <laughs> it's like preparing to go on a long <laughs> trip or something you know right you right. pack your bag, you get, you know, you get the car ready and, uh, and then you go. Yep. And then the storm comes Carla, and you're well prepared. <laughs> you're, the most interesting ones were that you've talked about with me are the ones that remove things though, because you don't realize that they're being removed because it was taken away. So you're not looking for it at that point. Uh, so that's a very wild uh, aspect of this stuff, too. Well, let me go way back to before I met you, Donnie. Oh, boy. Okay. Yeah. Because um, Neil had been gifted a chart. Um, and that's one of his buddies. And uh, by someone who I, I do have done their chart for 20 years and um, and knew that it would be beneficial for Neil to have one of these. So he's gifted it, okay. And so then when he's talking to me after we work with his chart and he's 
talking about you. And then there's a couple of other people who knew you. I mean, you want to talk about a wild, crazy. What was your your nickname? I mean, they everybody told me who I mentioned your name to, how, I mean, you were just off the wall. Oh, may, maybe Purple? Maybe they called me Purple Haze. Oh, well, that was would have been mild <laughs> from what I heard. Okay. Oh. Yeah, no, no, he, there, there were even. More I, I went at it hard. Huh? I, I went at it hard. And uh, everything that we do. So. Yeah, so, and the difference in a short period of time was actually amazing. Because mm. when I met you, everything was falling apart. Until mm -hmm. we worked with that chart. And then all of a sudden, you know, it really, it, you know, it, it definitely helps you, you know, and they, you know, and they say, you know, man, know thyself. And uh, without astrology, I don't think that that's really, that would take a very long time. I mean, it's almost like a fast track, I guess, you, because you, you, you can't pinpoint any awareness to your, your aspects or your personality without this i want to say it's just so pinpoint yeah uh, okay but i mean i think psychology would argue the point with you because they got all kinds of tests so they can give you this they can give you that etc cetera, etc cetera. but um mm. if somebody calls me and wants to have a chart done and have their transits when they call me all i have to do is look at their chart and i know exactly why they're calling me I know exactly what the issue is at that point in time. All I have to do is look at that piece of paper. Okay, so it certainly speeds things up. Now, psychology can maybe come up with this stuff, but it takes how long? How many tests? Right. You know. Yeah, I was just going to say that with astrology. So yeah, I agree with you, Carla, that psychology, clinical, standard scientific clinical psychology might argue the point that they can get to the same result. But I think it's the level of expediency that we get there through astrology versus clinical psychology. Um, and it really adds, uh, speaking of astrology, it, it adds a whole different level of perspective for an individual, at least in my purview. Um, that I don't really think I've ever been able to attain anywhere else in the amount of time I've been able to attain it. Yeah, I was, a, yeah, I was never going to go to psychology at that point when we had met because I was already lo lo looney tunes about the esoteric. Well, and, but then when you do that, you get labeled as a looney tune too. And that's like, you know, how things work in these days. Everything's marked on your record and it's there forever. <laughs> so well i i was probably in transits during that time too and i and it, oh, was, no I think it was my midlife well uh, i think they basically were implying to me that you were just like an explosion going off all the time yeah and that historically probably in your career you were known as a really wild crazy person um yeah i mean maybe. that's Okay. And so <laughs> Tom's looking and smiling, but, but um, the shift has probably been just a lot of it's because now you understand who you are. Oh, it changes everything. Yeah. And, and the, the energy patterns that come, you know what to do with them. Well, it also helps you like we were talking about earlier. I was thinking about it for a second there. And then when you get to know yourself, you can get to know your relative, you get to know other people much more deeply and in a real way, instead of how you see that, how you saw them before, now you see them for maybe for what they are. Mm -hmm. That's a, it's a whole different shift. And, and it just makes everything more pleasant. 
And so the then atmosphere. To, to let's talk about children for a minute. When you have kids, because it used to be, you know, I'm older than Hills. So it used to be the expectation was that the kids were just mini me's of the parents. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, astrology had nothing to do with uh, it. Uh, their personalities were just, you know, laid out by their parents and that was it. Okay. And um, so they had no real individuality as kids uh, way back when. You know, you, you were a reflection of your parents and um, so your parents were going to discipline you or do whatever need be so that you were good reflections when you went out the door, at least, or with them. But now, looking at it from an astrological viewpoint, I, I don't do that many children, but I, I do sometimes there's a request that I will honor. And so I know Donnie, because you, you've got three and a set of twins and an individual um, male child and two girls. So how do you, and those charts have been done. So how do you look at them now? Uh, I, I really am just, I, I figured very quickly after getting their charts. Now, I may not know all the ins and outs of their charts. Right? I don't, I do not. But it, I don't feel that it necessarily matters just yet that I don't know them because I, they, they automatically had their freedom with me. Uh, I just felt almost immediately I'm here to guide this little soul uh, so it can accomplish its chart out. I need to do my chart and then I also need to afford that opportunity from a much earlier age to my children. And now I just, um, I just try to be very aware of their, you know, what, you know, they're coming, you know, the, the, what they're up to, you know, I try to just pay attention and be aware of, of you know, how they're doing and, and be very, I'm just much more supportive than anything else. Um, Whereas before, I have to admit, if I, had we not gone down and you know and come to this, then it would be very clear that you know generation after generation, like everybody else, you would want them to be more like you, right? Or you know the way that you wanted them to be, or whatever expectations. I don't have. I, they all fell away. All that left. Mm -hmm. So I would say the same, though I haven't had my children's charts done yet. Um, however, I'd see useful benefit in it, getting some level of perspective there, because it would help my wife and I be able to perceive probably certain ways to deal with them versus just how we might have in the past. Now, having said that, like Donnie said, I'm not sure that it's an absolute necessity because just running through the process with myself has helped me to understand that each individual has their own chart and their own path that they have to follow. So if there's little quirks or differences that aren't quite measuring up to me as an individual's perspective and how things should be, well, I need to be more inclusive and accepting of that because that is probably something that that person is running through in the course of following their path via their chart they just might not know about yet um so you just kind of sit there and observe it as opposed to being judgmental about it um now what i can say about my kids though is that even though i haven't had their charts done yet um and going back to what you were saying carla about you know how generations want to deal with children and bringing them up to be a reflection of themselves. Um, I will say that at first, when I first became a parent, that was kind of my view, especially when my son was born, was that, oh, I have a son 
you know, old school traditional style of thinking. Oh, I have a son. I want him to grow up to be like me type of thing in some ways. And there are some things like, I don't want him to grow up to be like me in certain ways. <laughs> like, um, but um, having gone through this process, I kind of shed all of that away. I did. I shed all of that thinking away because I should not expect him ever to be me. He has to be him and he has to find his path and follow that guiding light on his journey um, when he's ready to do that, even though he's already doing it, he just doesn't realize it right now. But um, but yeah, that's how this has all helped me kind of see it through the perspective for my children. Um, but like I said, I still would like to get them done for my kids at some point because I think it would provide some perspective for the parent um, to gain some level of understanding of how how your child ticks so that you can better deal with it if you know things kind of slap you as a surprise like oh okay but they just let them work <laughs> that out so um as long as you brought up the subject you um when you talked about like they can't be you i mean you can't be anybody but who you are right right you know, and I don't care who it is, whoever they are, they are, but they can't be someone else. Mm -hmm. In fact, I don't know. Can you even imagine? No, Trying but we've, we, we've yeah. seen it. We've seen this older generations try to shove uh, people into cans or something in box, you know, in a box or, or to make them fit a certain mold, even though yeah. they could not. So there's a lot of tension released by allowing this, you know, for this. Yeah, can but, but can you psychologically even imagine being somebody else? No. See, and I don't think anyone can, unless they're looking and think they're gonna be a movie star or something like, like a, somebody in a movie. But as far as actually being someone else, I don't think it's possible for the psyche to even really seriously entertain that. No, and I wouldn't want it anyway. <laughs> right. But you had mentioned a little bit to that effect and I, I wanted to, to bring that, that up. I'm looking for your other questions here. If I could ask a quick question. Um, Go ahead. So we were talking about the different the different transits. So you got the one part, then you've got the three part, which I'm going through now. And I know Donnie's going through a five part. Um, what is the difference between the three part and the five part? What's There's more dates in the middle of that, but is there significance to those or is it just well, you're getting more downloads on those dates of certain things? It will only happen to the outer planets. In other words, I don't, I don't even think you'll get a, you'll get a possible five part with Pluto mm -hmm. and Neptune. And I don't think you'll even get one with Uranus. Uranus, you're going to get a three part. Hmm. Um, it's because they're farther out, their orbits take longer. And so sometimes in the length of that period, you get two backups instead of one hmm. that appears to, so that you have five contacts instead of three. Gotcha. To, okay. To the same point. Um, and <laughs> you'll, you'll get, and the inner planets between us and the sun you won't even get them mm -hmm. at all um, simply because it's a smaller orbit goes faster and it's not and we don't get that illusion that we get way out there um, does that answer the question <laughs> and those those but that pluto or that neptune are also have a very different impact. You know, the Pluto would be a transformation, which is substantial, mm -hmm. okay, and effective. And uh, how's law, 
La La Land going up there hmm. with the Neptune. It's been interesting. Not too <laughs> deep into it yet, but it's certainly been interesting. Um, it's easy to get lost in some things, and I have to like rip myself apart from it to make sure I don't go too far down the rabbit hole. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Like yeah, I was no. telling Donnie, I uh literally I was... in like a la la land. I mean yeah. you... And it's and it's weird because it's it's almost everything that you touch can turn to that. I, I told Dolly I was playing the piano the other day, and I like literally got lost to it to the point where I was envisioning myself in kind of like a music hall, and I could see the music notes and everything. <laughs> and I was like, I don't even know if I was really playing, but <laughs> but I was there. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Well. The quality of that particular energy, the Neptune energy, is not subject to time, for starters. Mm -hmm. Okay. Two, it that energy is so subtle, it can morph into anything you can imagine. Mm -hmm. So, um, <laughs> and then you're used, to, we're expected to, it's idealism, it represents idealism. So, Everybody gets a teeny weeny little dose of it to bring in. So collectively, all of humanity on the planet is working on it, but in a teeny, teeny bit. When you get a transit like that, or you get a chart that's heavily imbued with that Neptune, you get, um, I don't want to say an overdose, but I mean, you're, you get more than you can handle because you don't know how to handle the energy. So that, I mean, anything you can think of, it'll, it'll create that in your mind, just like you just said. Right. Here I am, here I'm doing this. I don't even know if I'm playing. I'm really doing it. it. <laughs> Man, it's real. Okay, because that is that kind of energy. And you don't realize that. You don't realize that it was your idea that just created all of this mm -hmm. because you're experiencing it as being real. Okay. So the line of least resistance for most people when they have a transit like that is, or if they've got a little bit of a heavy duty dose of it in their chart that they deal with all the time, they think it, they see it, they experience it. More often than not, they're involving someone else in their life because you oftentimes think about other people and what you're going to do or this or that. And, and believe me, they're creating the most idealistic experience possible because that's what this energy does. Mm -hmm. So when that, and that person that they projected it on and had this a great dream about or imagining that they think is real that's potential now for that person and when that person doesn't produce what they've experienced because now see they know that this person can do that because as far as they're concerned in their head when they've imagined them they have also given them all these wonderful idealistic attributes okay uh, that are beyond some anything you could possibly even create in this world. Mm -hmm. Okay, that level of idealism. And then the partner or the person who's in the dream here doesn't, doesn't produce. They don't ditch the dream. They ditch the person. It was their fault. They didn't do it. I knew they could do it. They didn't do it. And so then they're disappointed and bummed out. Um, and they don't realize that this kind of energy does that. Mm. Yeah. How would you determine if somebody has it heavier or less or more or less than? <laughs> um, transit wise or chart wise? Char I guess chart wise. Chart wise, you're going to have a lot of Neptune or a lot of Pisces planets. Oh, okay. 
you know, and then that's your everyday existence if it's in your chart that way. If the transits are coming in, they're there for a while and then they're gone. Um, and the, the expect, one of the suggestions of an astrologer at that case is don't do anything. In other words, Tom, don't engage Carmine, Carnegie Hall. <laughs> to have your, I would I your wouldn't even think on. On. Okay. <laughs> all right until after the Neptune transit is over <laughs> right because you will see things differently then okay? oh that that would be an interesting uh an, an interesting <laughs> uh whatever you call it um you know you're going to get right. to get accepted that's the people on home. American Idol who are terrible right. <laughs> it's just like okay so how'd I do? Well, you didn't play anything, but your eyes were closed and you weren't here. <laughs> and like for it, a lot of times what happens if there's a heavy, if, a, if it's a Neptune transit is uh, if they meet somebody, they fall in love because everything has this high degree of idealism that they're experiencing at the moment. Mm -hmm. Um when the Neptune transit is over and the transit goes away, then we're back to just real people. So the suggestion on an astrologer's part is don't get married during a Neptune transit because if you're in love with them and you're really in love, you'll be in love when the transit's over, then you can get married or else all of that idealism has fallen away now. It's no longer, in your system because it was not permanent it was it's coming along you're experiencing it you're kind of practicing how to use that energy mm. is is what's right. happening and um <laughs> well, yes. I shouldn't, well I that's shouldn't an quit, interesting i, I shouldn't there. be quitting my day job and uh going not into yet. a life of music just yet right <laughs> <laughs> so uh, on an interesting note regarding that, um, yes, <laughs> my initial uh, um, dates with this Neptune that I've got this five part, I'm handling it much different now than I did. I, I guess I did maybe potentially learn to, to handle. Is that right? Is it learn to work with the energy? Is well, <clears throat> the the best thing that can happen with that type of energy, if you're going to get a dosage of it, is you need to be, have a platform to use it mm -hmm. in the arena that it functions, which idealism is the future. Okay. Idealism is spirituality mm -hmm. because the, if, if, if you look at your chart that you're always using, you know, where you've got the different levels. Okay, those levels up there, which is where that energy functions the best and where you can use it most effectively is the future. It is mm. that, that is that quality of energy. We just normally get a little teeny bit of it and maybe in your lifetime under normal circumstances, you have an ideal that you try to pitch here or there or try to express yourself, just being kind, being nice, being, you know, or maybe you're pushing a religion a little bit or whatever, but it's, it's only a little bit. When you get the transit, you get a heavier dose. Mm -hmm. It does two things. One, it dissolves things in your life that you no longer need and you won't have a clue that it's, the stuff is gone till the transit's over. Maybe you can get a little sense something's not quite right, but but basically when it's over, you will be changed from where you started. Secondly, the best use of that energy is if you are pursuing some spiritual course at that point in time, because that energy works with those ideas and ideals um and then it's not going to throw you off so far mm. otherwise um yeah you you project 
the ideal onto something that's tangible and you can't see the difference. That's when you need really good friends during a Neptune transit, very good rational friends uh, that you are willing to listen to what they've got to say to you um, so that when you bounce stuff off of them, they can give you a clue of whether you're totally in outer space or if that sounds like a reasonable idea because you won't have the perspective. So the answer for you, Donnie, is I think the way you're using the material for what you said to me is you are, you're using that energy, but you're actually every day you're working with material that, that there's a place for. Mm -hmm. um, because you're doing your reading, you're doing your videos, you're working with the Bailey material, so on and so forth. I think every day, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I don't feel like I'm, I, on, I, I could be wrong. I don't feel like I'm in la-la land. Right. Because you're not, you're able to use that energy and, and these books were in print. So they're tangible books. They've been around for a long time, but that energy is that platform. If you've got the platform for it, you're going to be fine. If you don't, uh, will be it you know I mean I've seen some real kickers where somebody just can't see another person for what they are no matter how many people will tell them you know until it's over and then it's a shocker but they realize that boy I couldn't see that one at all and and am I in a mess now okay kind of thing and have to extricate themselves if they can from the messes they got into because they wouldn't listen to anybody else. And, um, you know, that's what happens. I don't know if Neptune ever left my, my chart. Sounds like my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> it might not in some sense. <laughs> but uh, I think that's um, interesting to hear too because even though I don't do the, di the daily videos with Donnie, I am in these books every single day. And like I said, I, I knew I was getting lost when I was in that piano music moment. And I was like, I have to tear myself away from this. And then the thing that I went and did after that was I started diving into the race. So I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I've got to use this energy in the right way. And I knew right where to go uh, to pull myself away from it. But what I will say is that- um, It was a great concert. <laughs> It was a great concert, even if I wasn't playing. I felt like, I, 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 I don't know. It was very, very bizarre. Anyway, <laughs> no, but I was going to say, when I read the materials now, um, it, it's almost like I get a different level of clarity than I did before, if that makes sense. Yes. It resonates with me a little bit differently. It seems to sink, and I gain understanding almost immediately from it. Um, and that some of that probably comes from just having been diving into the books for a while now. But with this Neptune transit, I've certainly found a great appreciation for the platform that I have built because it's it's definitely I feel like I'm grounded with it now, which is good. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, that is the that is the energy that correlates with it. Mm -hmm. That's where you'll get your maximum benefit out of that energy in a Neptune transit. And Pluto, that's the, is, is that the midlife? That's part of the midlife series? Well, or? Pluto gets it all. I mean, midlife gets it all. They get mm. all of it. You know, that's that midlife crisis period from 40 to 45 you get everything thrown at you. Yeah. 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 And to see what, how much you can handle. You know, that is the period of time where um, <clears throat> for people who really do something unique, for example, or create a company or, or take something that um, that that's, 
separates the wheat from the chaff at that point in time. There's a certain number of people who can handle it all and work through it all and keep it all together and come out with, with something. Um, you know, they build this or that or, or whatever it is that they're doing. Um, and, and that, that makes, that makes different classifications of people the way we classify people in terms of their creativity, their productivity, all of this and all of that and what they do. Um, you know, and that's where you make a major shift in your focus. You're basically halfway through your life in terms of a Uranus cycle when you're 42. Um, and the head, the psychological patterning shifts. You've been working to do things tangible, accomplish, et cetera, et cetera. And that's where the shift now comes for, all right, now let's take a look at the second half here and where we're going. And we're going in a different direction because there's a Neptune uh, transit in that period of time too. So, and you're better, you're more able to look at the spirit because now you're heading in that direction. You know, at what one senses at that point is an accelerated point, not that it's necessarily accelerated, but uh, you realize that half your life, I mean, psychologically, you're gonna realize basically half your life is gone. Where, what have I done? Um, what have I accomplished? Uh, you know, I've only got so much time. You start to recognize that, that there's a difference in the shift. Um, so that's part of the midlife crisis. And then when you realize that you haven't done all those things you were going to do, boy, well, I better just dump this all and go get a whole new life or something. That's what some people do. Generally only needs a little tweak here and there, but some of them throw everything out, maybe with the bath water. Less probably now than 40 years ago, because 40 years ago, there was so much money out there everybody had money that they could just ditch everything you know dump the house dump the wife dump the cars and get a whole new set of everything mm -hmm. and financially now for most people that's not possible anymore so they have to make smaller shifts smaller changes which is probably all they really needed to do in the first place but those were different times. And if you don't make some of that spiritual shift by the time you're 63, then you're just, your life is reruns after that. Mm. In other words, you, you know, maybe you'll take care of the grandkids a little bit and you're going to watch reruns, literally. Um, if you connect with that spiritual stuff, you then have the vitality and the connection to vitality that you will not have if you ignore it as you get older. Yeah, yeah DK does talk about that. And you know, 63 could be a, a rough year if you hadn't, he says, made the uh, spiritual shift over. Yeah. But I will tell you, because of course I've been around this for a long time and I've known groups who've worked with this material for a long time. And uh, some of them are still, of course, uh, you get your link to Facebook, even if you're not on it, if you haven't totally gotten off it and the birthdays come and so on and so forth. And the people in these groups, they're still there. Um, they live for a long time and they're still active. And, um, you know, it is that vitality, it's that connection. Hmm. You know, they don't get tired as easy as other people. They have more energy than other people. Um, 
it's just it and probably I, i'm not going to make some big leap of a better health but to some extent probably they they certainly see life and feel life better uh, whether they have all the health or not and of course when you get into these um esoteric healing and some of some of those, that material i mean your health comes from your relationship with your soul and if it ain't going too good or you're off the track a little it'll, bit it'll let you know right yes you'll you'll i i think the com the comment one of the comments is it sends a little irritant down mm -hmm. into your system somewhere um to make you sick enough so you get off the track you're on you know you have to make a change and if you can't do that then it's probably will just be persistent and short circuit things a little bit but your real health comes from your well-being your spiritual well-being because it's got to be coordinated with your etheric body mm -hmm. and um you know so mm -hmm. that's that's where it, that's where your real health comes from it's not from your dna there's a lot more interest and pressure put on the dna then what is warranted yeah carla i have uh, saturn and leo and uh i read somewhere at some point that i just keep getting younger yeah there's a reverse process for some people yeah they made a movie about that didn't they yeah benjamin yeah. button or something yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's the Saturn. It's the it's the um, that does the reverse. They start out more mature and uh, progress to being less mature. <laughs> because they technically really feel younger and they do things um, that they should have or, or normally would have been done younger. That's for the mm. ah, interesting. That is interesting. So many interesting combinations and variations, and uh, you know the well, houses I, and all the you know it's just unbelievable. Well, yes, because every every chart is unique, and so even if they're twins or whatever, the the point is that on more subtler levels than just that circular chart you first of all you're not born on top of each other at the exact same instant so that even if you're born you know in the same room because you're twins and you come out just a little bit difference in time there are differences when you start getting into the deeper levels of a chart for twins they might look like they're identical as far as the basic chart but there's always a couple minutes off there. They literally latitude and longitude makes a difference. Even uh, it's, it's all of that. So they may have very similar basic looking charts until you start. There's other levels of analysis of a chart and you start, I look in there. That's where I see the difference for the, for twins. Mine are about 11 minutes and uh, totally different little human. I think it's about 11, minutes, but totally different human beings, you know. Mm -hmm. They get along great, but yeah. uh, very, you know. And you had said at one point, I think that by the time they're 21, there will be almost a three year difference in their level of. Uh, I don't maturity maybe or 
that's kind of how I took it. Um, there would be three years difference in them at some by the time they're twenty one. Yeah. Yeah. And I can see you can see that we can see that now, you know, already mm -hmm. starting at seven. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be their one degrees and the patterns that they they have that would have been what that would have been connecting mm -hmm. to, which is another technicality that's not uh, that you don't use until you start looking deeper. Yeah. But um, I'm sure there's other questions that we didn't get to. We didn't even get to the basics because it's basically, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, uh, well, what, you know, would you expect anything less from this crew? <laughs> no, not at all. All over the, all over the place, everywhere, but not focused. <laughs> um, you know, because in a, as an astrologer, basically what an astrologer does is looks at that circle to, to understand the personality that's going to be expressed. You're looking at geometry. I, I look at the relationships, geometrical relationships between the planets. I know what the symbols for the planets represent, but then I want to see how they all get along within the individual. Mm -hmm. So that's, that, that's where one starts as an astrologer and then uh, <clears throat> and then you look for the transits and and as far as it all being wrapped up it's like i have a son who who has a lot of event patterns happen when he was 20 okay and uh and i had come come to him sometimes i would be out of the country for a certain period of time so i thought oh i better Look at his chart before I leave because I don't. Oh, oh, oh you know, that, uh, I'm not one of those. I'm looking for bigger patterns. I don't do the watching the day by day and all that stuff. Uh, I might have told you the story. You know, I come to him and say, Hey, you know that saying shit happens? <laughs> yeah, but it's on its way, you know, because <laughs> he had a. He had a chart where he had a whole bunch of planets together. So when things are really good, they're really good. If if there's going to be an issue, the issue is going to sweep through all of this part of your life. All of <laughs> and it was it was like twelve weeks, a different major event for twelve weeks in a row. Okay, you want to talk about not being able to hide? <laughs> he could not hide. No matter. First of all, he was in momentum, so he couldn't slow a lot of it down. Secondly, God could find him wherever he was. There'd be a knock on the door. <laughs> Literally mm. find him. He could not hide. Um, so when it was all done, and this was my kid who says, Well, I ain't gonna change, mom, till I want to change. Okay, you know, that Leo kid there. And okay, so fine. Um, but I had wrote out everything each week, what was going to happen the day and what, what it was is going to happen. And, and he had it, but he could not slow down the momentum. So, um, and so when it was all done, I had given him a book that pointed out what these transits were. So a couple of years later or something, I saw it on his bookshelf and I thought, well, that's interesting. Let me take a look at what's in there. And so here were the little notes because I, I had written, noted which ones these were in the book. And he'd say, this is what I did. Let me draw a line down here, the sentence. This is what I didn't do. Okay. And self-corrected himself through his own analysis because that was just... <laughs> Who he was he wasn't going to listen to anybody else um but i had asked him I, I mentioned to him later i said you know the real question you should be asking is how could i do that not how can i as an astrologer do that how can i turn around with numbers what is going on that i can take a number 
some abstract numbers. Because I, I told him I could have wrote this out the day you were born. I could have written this out. That when you were 20, this is these things were going to happen. Because once I had that time, date, and place, mm -hmm. I have that whole set of transits for his entire life. And I got the book. They're cheap books now that, you know, computer generated programs. I used to have to do all this myself, all the math for everything um, when I started. That's how old I am. And so, anyway, but now I can buy a book that tells me for 100 years where everything's going to be. So, the question should be how can I do that? How can I take this line of math? and delineate and tell you but what this is going to happen and, and it's what happens each of those days. In other words, what are we in the middle of? What are we connected to that I can do that? Or that it can be done. I'm not trying to draw attention to myself mm -hmm. as an astrologer because that, I think, other astrologers can do the same thing. But if you have that information, what is going on that I can turn around and write that stuff down and it happens. And it's like you said, Donnie, it comes here on time. It arrives on time. You know. <clears throat> because we're a set of numbers. I can lay your, I can on an ephemeris now where they have every day of the month where all the planets are okay and i've done it long enough now so i can take a look at a given day look across the line of those 10 points that i'm work with i don't have to even make a chart out of it and i can tell you that person's personality just from a thin line of data yeah, is this and this is mostly because we're the effect and not the cause, right? Set back. That's the hard part to uh, come to terms with, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it's something that individuals or humanity as a whole should be looking at. Yeah, I mean, along those lines, and and I'll, I, I don't know, it's, maybe it's appropriate, but I'm going to say it anyway. I was reading, you know, I'm reading the, the Light of the Soul, and he's talking about even your organs and the function of the organs are an effect. You know, the organ itself is an effect of, you know, from the cause, from the energy coming down. And, and and the mind and these things are uh, not what we thought, not what we think is what uh, is all I'm saying. Right. We're looking at this effect, or you know, this watching this play out the ref, from the reflection, I guess, or something. Right. Well, and the um, I lost thought at at that moment. Um, yeah, I, I lost it. I was thinking it, and then you said something, and it'll come back. But um, yeah, I mean, the, the, that's a big, very big question that we do need to. And I mean, we perhaps can find the answer in Shakespeare that we are just actors on a stage playing our part. Might be one of the best ways of putting it, but that's not going to satisfy most of the psyches in today's world because they're looking for more. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's such an interesting thing. Because the soul, I'm, I'm now I'm just spitballing, I'm sorry, but you got me thinking on this. The soul uh, determines the need to incarnate. And this is the purpose of that uh, set back. Um, because uh, the consciousness aspect and well you know your little chart yeah yeah of course that's what i'm pondering in my head essentially okay is the chart. 
So you've got the little chart and we do need to throw in here that you are the consciousness creating little machine here. Okay, right. this body, that's what it does in actuality. So the soul needs more consciousness, if you will. How, in other words, how do you get up that chart? You get it up that chart by creating the consciousness, the union of spirit and matter, all the way up that chart. To get to the soul. When you're capable of getting to the soul, sub-level three, level five, then there is the contact between the soul and the consciousness you've created. You've had to work your way up there. That is the job. So if the soul needs another incarnation, it means you're not there yet, for starters. Uh, but it's ready to have a little, some more consciousness built, directing it in the direction that is the objective. Uh, sometimes that probably falls in different categories of time, different categories of the outer slower generational planets being here, there, or elsewhere. But mm. understand the soul doesn't experience time, so there you are. Mm. <clears throat> so that's like nothing. You know, they're not sitting there waiting 10 centuries at that level okay <laughs> if they're down here they are not that they'd be living for 10 centuries <laughs> but in other words the, there's the difference now when you finally get that union that's what the masters call the first real initiation because something's actually really happened prior to that all this down here is just just um kindergarten in the sandbox you know, that level of stuff. Because you're not going to get any real action until you get up to that. That uh, to align with the soul. And well, bring it on then. <laughs> you know that you, it's your job. Nobody else can do it for you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because then you have a meet and greet, you see, at that point. That's what the third really is. I mean, that's, that's, I make light of some of this stuff because I mean, you have to make light of it. You just, uh, you know, I mean, I keep throwing this at you guys, but I mean, that, that book title that before enlightenment, you uh, chop wood and haul water, and after enlightenment, you chop wood and haul water. I mean, that's really true. So, um, you know, what can you do but laugh? And I, I used to see a lot of books written and they would be writing about masters that were in the Far East, but not, not the books, not the life and teachings of the masters of the Far East, but they would be depicting um, the masters that are considered to be masters that are evaluated somewhere off in the Orient or whatever. And um, they would always be denoted as laughing. They would have a really good laugh, you know. And after, I'm sure after enlightenment, they find out they're still here. What can you do but laugh? <laughs> <laughs> in all seriousness. Of this show so, again. <laughs> yeah, you, you have to take light of this stuff because you're where and where are you going? You're already in a universe, and there is no metaverse. Sorry, but there's not. That's something made up, and and it does not appear to be. When there's something that's completely has a lack of truth, the inner self is not attracted to it. It's not. It's not a magnetic scenario. So you're still in the universe. And if you now start looking back in some of Vatsky's numbers, days and nights of Brahma, the numbers this long. Okay, so you're gonna be around for a long time. 
in this system before it's going to go back and go night night for a while and then come back out later with another big bang or something. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, and Chela fever starts once you start, first look at this material <gasps> and you got to tell everybody everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's called Chela fever. And, uh, because I used to talk to my daughter about this because she would be going through some of this. And and when you stop talking about it, it's because it's finally, you're really probably trying to convince yourself with your own voice when you're talking about it to everybody. Right. But when it's finally anchored here, you don't talk about it anymore. You might move on to another subject or a bigger event pattern or something. But once you really got it, then you don't have to keep convincing yourself while you're talking to other people, trying to convince them. Uh, those are just all transitions that you go through stages. Yeah, so. lots of stages. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> and some people are driven to pursue this and other people could care less. It's right. not even within their view anywhere, you know. And that's from the chart. Is that that's from the chart uh, or from the soul? That that's more the soul. That that it's more your past history. You know, in other words, if you're already on that journey, because the soul preserves all of your experiences on this planet. That's what it does. It's your house of history. It's the preserver until you can get that far. Because once you can get up that far, then you can hook on to the spiritual triad and you can start dealing with the formless world. But prior to that, you're stuck in form. Um, you know, and, and I truly mean that the lower two, one is the sandbox. That's sub-level, that's number seven down there. And the other one I just call bubbles, that's the astral plane. Um, you know, anything can be anything there. Two and two can be 149. You know, there's no standards. So until you get to the mental plane, you're, uh, that's just practice down there. And uh, you're trying to figure out how to operate in the system with the equipment you've got and try to figure out the system you're in, you know? just like little kids do when they get born and are here. They gotta go through all that every time. So. Yeah. so the answer was some people are on that journey already and so they will be driven. Other people in a given lifetime may connect with it and there's other people doesn't even exist. They have no clue. I think it's very interesting that some people study astrology who aren't really on in, into the spiritual. Like a spiritual path, yeah. Yeah, no, that's, no. I, that's a, I don't think, uh, well, I started out with both of them at the same time. And so then I knew people who were doing the same. But by the same token, I would think that the, uh, there's a great percentage of people. This is a this is a learning curve for them. I mean, because eventually you do have to realize you're connected to something that's a larger. There's something larger going on than just your everyday stuff here. Uh, but there's a whole lot of people who, yeah, they can do the astrology, but they they're they're not connected to the other. They haven't found, because there's a lot of hocus pocus that goes on, you know, in terms of what we call spirituality um, that isn't that definitive and directed towards that mobility upward. Um, 
you know, I mean, we, we know that the astral plane's got, it's like a mosh pit hmm. of, of stuff, you know, that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with your real development and really hooking up and really connecting and really um, making that journey. Yeah. But it's fun and games. Yeah. It's diversions. It's, I mean, I remember you see in the 60s when they first put on a, um, they must have had some kind of a light uh, screen that had lights on. And then when you put the music on, you could see the patterns mm -hmm. of the music. Well, that was one of the first big phenomenal things that made you realize that sound and motion and then of course the drugs came so not then you could see all of that in your head mm. um with that thing lighting up and doing different things than it, it ever really been considered uh doable before um but but that's just hocus pocus in terms of the real journey you know but people can spend their whole life there thinking they're accomplishing something. So. What, which, uh, which planets, so, so the outer planets, more spiritual, is that? Well, yes, but. I'm not, I don't want to take away anything. I'm not trying to take oh, away no, 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 well, yes and no. the other planets. But. Yeah, no, 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 no. Because the inner planets be between the sun and Saturn are the ones that we build our society on. An operating society that can be sustainable. In other words, we got a mother, we got a father, we got a home, we've got a family, brothers and sisters, uh, and we're gonna work. And we, we look for a partner and we have a body of law and we do commerce and business. That is basic society. That if it's done with some kindness and some care, you can sustain humanity's social development on a positive note. Okay. The three outer planets bring you unique and different energies that are meant to slowly get integrated into our society so that we grow and we evolve okay so that there's new ideas in terms of um aquarian humanity if you will would be you know and and our concepts grow there neptune our spirituality and our idealism, we get a little bit of that and integrate it. And then we will get the Pluto, which is connected with the collective unconscious, which is now the, the depth, the, the nine tenths below the surface of humanity's archetypal structures that it uses. Okay. And you will interact with those every so often. Those are your major transformations that are the eye openers, the, the type of thing that you're gonna get when you read Cosmic Consciousness, where he says, after you've experienced that, because what you've done is you have changed, the Pluto has the capacity to restructure those archetypal structures of which they're nine tenths below the surface, so that you can get a different result above the surface, if that makes any sense to you. So they're only meant to go in in slow doses, those outer three planets, because they do not necessarily enhance the everyday living of humanity. I mean, you know, you, got, you had a, a Uranus transit, knocks the living daylights out of you. Yeah, I, yeah, I've had, I've, I've been in, uh, I just finished one and still have another. And then I had that big, you know, that I want to say that big one. I, I don't know why I said, I don't mean as big, but it was, it was significant. 
Right. And, awesome. and, and the result. Yeah. Well, it knocked you. I mean, knocked you for a loop. I saw you yeah. the day after. <laughs> that did knock you for a loop. It's like a shock. Okay. Yeah. Because it uproots the foundation underneath you with a lightning bolt. Um, in other words, it goes through your electrical circuits just like it would in a house and blows a few of them out. Um, you know, which is mm -hmm. a little bit of a shock. Uh, you adjust, but you adjust a little differently from it. Um, and you can't, you could not live a society, a society wholly on Neptune. You know, I mean, if you had a society that was all functioning on heavy doses of Neptune, uh, you'd either, at your best case scenario, you'd all be in the movie theater all the time. <laughs> they okay. don't be in Carnegie Hall with me. Yeah, you'll be in Carnegie Hall. <laughs> well, that would be a, that would be an interesting sight if everybody was just stuck in Neptune. Yeah, well, I can't imagine a whole lot would get done. Oh, not much would get done, and it would be, and actually, a lot of a lot of things would fall apart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's not sustainable energy in these lower three dimensions for starters. So, uh, yeah, nothing practical. Your normal day-to-day -day life for society that has a certain degrees of stability with them, along with the variability, um, those outer three planets aren't it. You know, they're just there are advancement there are there are our evolution is there but a slow evolution and that's a lot of uh, midlife right is that well is that all fair? those plants will come through and it's a matter of what you can what you do with them yeah. In that five year period. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think when we had met, I, I was in the Pluto at the time. I think, if not, it was right before then. And then it's been Neptune and Uranus, Uranus since a lot. Yeah, it's, it's the age sector yeah. that you're going through that you get those transits mm -hmm. and you know you need uh, when i say that this is the operating program you you have to have something that all of humanity is part of because then they can communicate they can identify in other words, we got 12 signs, we got 10 planets or, or symbology that's in there. Um, it gets thrown together so that nobody's really exactly the same, but they all have the basic components. And um, if you didn't have that, you would be back in that bar in Star Wars, the first movie. You know, and where you look and I mean, how do they interact? Because they're all from different places with, with whole different um, operating programs from whatever planet they grew up on and whatever physical structure they look like and et cetera, et cetera. So you have to have something like astrology as a foundation and an operating program so that even if you don't speak the same language, you're still dealing with some of the basic fundamentals of humanity in terms of a basic social interaction within the framework of a given country. <laughs> you know, mothers, fathers, children, so on and so forth. Um, and futures look, you know, we're pretty much geared to go routing down the same type of future. 
people get off the train car at a certain stages and other people stay on longer. You know, but in terms of what they do for work, what their education is, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you have to have a basic program and this is it. So some people um, get into it and other people just aren't there yet. But if you do, if you're able to understand your own chart, if you will, and you work with the transits that are yours, that's what the intent was for each individual's given life. They're not all going to do that. But you will find a sense of happiness there because you know you're on your right track. It's not anybody else's track. It's yours. But you know you're on it and you're consciously aware of what it is. So that, um, you know, not that you know everything, but you at least have a sense of where you are. It buffers whatever's coming next. Versus going, driving to New York without a map. Mm -hmm. No low jacks, no, no um, GPS or whatever they call it and all of that. You know, try to drive there from where I am in California. Yeah, yeah. I think you certainly want to know. You certainly, certainly want to know when there's opportunity, especially, you know, I don't want to say spiritual opportunity, but uh, if there's going to be energies that are coming in that can lean and take you off, way off into some la-la land dream of your own making, and do you know get you down and jams and then as opposed to where if you you know if you focus it can you know bring you over here i mean this is something we need to know this right. is essential yeah. Yeah. if you're gonna if you if you're gonna get a transit that like you had said if something's gonna make you could make you think that you're crazy and now you know that you're not crazy. This is a new, this is something, uh, an astrological happening or event. Yeah. And I have, work. yeah. And I have people who build businesses on this because they can see the timing and the schedules. I mean, it happens to be their chart and they're destined probably to do this, but now they have the, the dates for schedules so they can schedule this or that. Uh, and they, they know how to use it. It's intuitively part of them, but now they got it out in front of them. So hmm. that's another benefit for people who are working in the everyday world. Yeah, it's just a benefit. I mean, all around, it's it's uh, beneficial. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, certainly you, you want to know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so basically what happens is what it, <clears throat> what happened with you guys is somebody sent an astrologer your way if you will because that's how it happened um you know the referral went to neil and then from neil i think he contacted you and then you contacted somebody else but in other words you were informed that there was that available out there and you got involved the level of interaction and now you you've seen what it's got to offer and for you guys it's beneficial makes life a lot better yeah uh, and certainly for the spiritual journey and dk does say an understanding of the personality profile is important uh and certainly it helps us to know ourselves. Uh, better and, and just adds a piece of the puzzle certainly for the for the journey yeah, it, makes life, it just makes life a lot easier yeah. and yet it's not written in stone whatever those transits come along and bring you that's yours to make something of nobody's going to tell you what to do with it right you know but it certainly gives you some insight and clarity as to what you might be dealing with in a general sense 
And so when those things hit you during that time frame, you know, it might come as less of a surprise or you'll be better prepared to deal with it effectively. Right. Um, now, you know, I, I, every once in a while I get a question, especially from some of my friends who don't do this. What happens when you have to tell them something bad? Mm -hmm. okay, well, um, is there anything really bad? I don't think that the there point. is. <laughs> that, see, that is the point. I, I tell them, I said, I, I'm not telling you anything bad. All these transits were given to that particular individual in his chart for use. So if you are working with your own chart, then there's a place and you understand the places for all these things. Right. Um, you know, and so they're not bad. Um, they're all you know, growth opportunities. That's kind of how I look at it. Yeah. And um, uh, and you can make, when you have that awareness, you can make some decisions, mm -hmm. you know, because you, you, in a sense, know the territory around you, the landscape. Okay, I can make, um, you know, probably shouldn't be doing this at this point in time, but I'm over here doing that. And so, yeah. Right. One of, one of the most in, uh, one of the most impactful things that you had said to me early on was when you are not happy with the life that you created, you are you have a predisposition for this, that, and the other thing. Now it wasn't the predisposition to those things that was the most impactful for me. It was the fact that you had said, I created my life this way. And I had never <laughs> considered it up until that point. And then for whatever reason, the way you had said it, I looked around and I said, holy crap. I literally placed every single thing in my life in exactly where it is. I, I allowed these relationships with these people. I did. This is all my holy crap, <laughs> like I did all of this, really. Yeah. And uh, and then from that point on, it was like, it, every that changed everything. When you had said, when you, you pointed that out, and it's, uh, I don't, for whatever reason, you know, I, wholly dreaming before that, maybe, I don't know, like fully <laughs> asleep or, uh, or something, I don't know. But that certainly was, makes you accountable for the choices you've made over the course of your life, right? You, you, you gain an appreciation and a level of awareness for self-accountability. That's I guess there was no accountability probably before that. Right. And there might have been even some <laughs> finger pointing and blaming like I ended up here oh, because, certainly. you know, somebody told me this. Well, you did something with that something that person told you. So it's like, yeah. Who was really at fault, it. right? Um, yeah, very, 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 very big deal. That was that was very impactful. So yeah, all of that, and then it all just goes from there, you know. So, but it does. It forces you to look in the mirror, and uh, that's really what it's all about, because it's a reflection of reflection of reflection of reflection. But oh, I you know, Carla, I know we're we're getting into this a bit now, and we certainly have more things to talk about. Maybe we we would, you know, and I know they're big subjects: retrogrades, nodes, uh, Another free, time. Will, free yeah, will. Yeah, maybe uh, uh, maybe we can turn this yeah. into a series. We can invite you back for a future installment. Right. Well, let's see how this goes first and where there's <laughs> any interest in it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What else? What else we got? Do you want to, uh, are we going to call it there? Do you want to go into We've, something? Haven't else? we got enough? We've been rambling on. Anybody who wants to listen to this listens to ramblers. <laughs> 
Just a rambling man. That is right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, I will. Um, thank you for coming. Yes. Again. Thanks for joining us again. It's been, You're welcome. It's been very good. Yeah. Wish we could have you all the time, but we understand completely. Okay. I'm going yeah. to. Going to cut the. Okay. <laughs>